What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be going over how you can make some absolutely epic procedural planets in Blender, and how to set up a good space scene, and finally I'm going to go over a few compositing tips that are really easy to implement, and can absolutely take your work to the next level. So I'll hop into my scene, like always, switch over to Cycles, GPU Compute, 128 render samples, and I'll set my color management to high contrast. Now, I'm also going to be using volumetric clouds in this. So I'm going to click this volumes drop down, and I'm going to set my step rate to 0.1. I'll also lower my max steps to 128. This just adds a nice level of extra detail and realism to any volumes you use, but you do have to be careful because this will drastically increase your render times if you have a lot of volumetrics going on. So with that done, let's delete the default cube, delete the default light, shift A, and add in, you're never going to guess, a UV sphere. Set the segments to 64 and the rings to 32, and right click and shade smooth. Now, usually I like to work with like real world size measurements, but obviously you can't really do that with a planet because it would make Blender really mad to deal with numbers that big. So I'm just going to scale this up by 150. And then I'm going to click Object up here and apply my scale. Now I'll hop over into our shading editor. Zoom out again. And I'm going to click on our camera. Come down here to the transforms. And set all these values to 0. And then set my Y to something like 3000. Now I can hop over into my camera view. And... One thing we also have to do is adjust this clip start and clip end. If you set your clip start to 1 meter and your clip end to 10,000, that'll make sure we can actually see our sphere because it'll be nice and in range. Now, the reason I also set this camera so far away is because most of the time when you're dealing with like any sort of pictures taken in space or rendered for like movie scenes in space, they're going to be taken basically with like a telescope. And so if we set our focal length to something like 300 millimeters, that's going to give us a much more accurate result. And if we hop back here and set our X rotation to minus 90 and our Z rotation to zero, you'll see we've got our sphere in our view. But if you look over here in the top right corner, we're actually upside down relative to the coordinate axis. So I'm going to set my Y rotation to 180. So that way the positive Z is up and negative Z is down. Now I'm also going to slide my camera up on the z-axis a bit, so that way we just have this sort of over-the-horizon shot for our scene. With that, let's hop over into rendered view, and I'm going to set my background color to black for now, then shift A and add in a light, make it a sunlight, and the sun is really, really bright, so I'm going to set my strength to something like 15, and this is actually much less realistic than what you'd see in real life, but it does look a lot prettier in my opinion. So that is up to you what you want to do. Now I'm noticing I can still kind of see the edges of my sphere. So I'm going to click on it again and add a subdivision surface. And I'll just set both of these to one. Now with that done, let's click and add a new material. Shift A and add in a Musgrave texture. Just plug this into the base color and set your roughness to something very close to one. When you're dealing with something at the scale of planets, it's pretty much impossible to get something perfectly shiny and reflective. So a high roughness value is gonna be much more accurate. Slide this over and set it to Ridge Multifractal and crank up your detail and lower your dimension to something like 0.3 and then crank up this gain value. Now you can see this gives us a really nice sort of rocky cracked earth sort of material but if we press Control t to bring up our mapping and texture coordinate nodes we can actually distort this to make it look way more realistic even still. Shift d on your Musgrave texture, slide it down here, Control t again, Shift A, and let's add in a Mix RGB. I'll plug that in here, 
and then I'm going to plug this height value into the bottom color slot. This makes for a great cement texture also, but for this case, I'm going to lower my scale down to something like a 0.7, maybe a 0.8-ish. And this just gives us a nice ratio of like large detail, medium detail, and really fine small scale detail. You can also adjust the dimension value down here to give yourself some really interesting effects. I kind of like where that's sitting. And so what I'm gonna do is add in a color ramp. Now for this particular case, I'm gonna create sort of just like a blue ice sort of planet but you can do whatever you want with this. It's super customizable, and honestly, it's just super relaxing to play around with different color palettes. So again, just have fun with this and see what you can create, see what you like. I like something like that. And so the next thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add in a hue saturation value and lower my saturation just a touch. Something like 0.8 should be good. Then shift A and let's add in a mix RGB. And I'm going to switch this to add and switch this bottom color to something atmospheric, like what you think your sky should be. Then shift A and add in a layer weight. If you set this blend to something around a 0.6, then shift A, add in a math node, and plug this for Nell into the top value. Switch this to divide, divide by two, and plug this into the factor. This sort of influences the color of our planet in the same way a sky realistically would. And I'm actually going to add in a color ramp again here and just lower my white values down to something like a 0.5. As you can see, as I drag this up, we get more and more sort of like diffusion happening toward the edge of our planet. But I like something like that, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And now one last thing you can do for your material is it's very subtle, but if you add in a bump node and plug your Musgrave texture height output into the height value here, and then plug your normal into the normal here, you can see that gives us this bumping effect. Now for real life planets, it's a very, very subtle amount. So much so that you theoretically shouldn't need any. But again, we're going for pretty and cinematic, not quite realistic. So I like something around a 0.042, and that looks pretty good to me. So with that, I'm going to switch back into my layout and shift D my sphere. And I'm going to scale this up by 1.004. Then I'll hop back into my shader editor. And I'm going to delete this material off of it and add in a new one. Delete the principled BSDF. Shift A and add in a principled volume. Plug that in there. And then Shift A, bring in a Musgrave texture. Control T. Slide this over. Slide your texture coordinate over again. Switch this to Ridge Multifractal, and switch your Musgrave to 4D. Now I'm going to plug this into my density, and I'll play around with my detail and dimension values. There we go. And then again, you're just going to set your gain to something absolutely huge. And I'm also going to scale down this texture. Something around there ought to be good. Then Shift A, and I'm just going to bring in a regular old noise texture and a mix RGB again. Plug that in there and plug our color output into here. Set this as well to 4D and lower my scale a little bit. I'll also up my detail and up my roughness a little bit. Now, if I add in a map range node, 
I want to make it so that there's sort of like clouds, but there's also just a general atmospheric haze caused by like the air, as you can think of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my from min value to something like 0.45. So that way we isolate the clouds and then I'll set my to min value to something like 0.04. And this to min value will be the value of like your general air-based haze. And this max value is going to be the density of like your clouds. So I'll set that just a little bit higher. Then I'm going to shift A and add in a color ramp. Switch this to constant. And plug your map range output into the factor. And plug this color into the color of your principled volume. Now, as you can see, we sort of have like a mask for the clouds versus the regular atmosphere. So I'm just going to drag these until I feel like I've got my clouds decently masked. And then I'm going to change this black value to something more bluish in my case. This value will just be like your general atmospheric haze. And now if you just slide this W value, you can play around with this to get any sort of cloud texture you like. I actually like that one. I just randomly selected. But yeah, that's the easiest way to customize your planets is just to slide these W values on your noise textures. And I'll actually jump back real quick to my planet texture. And I'll set both of these to 4D as well. And now you can see we have a randomness slider for both our material of our planet and for our clouds. So before I render, I'm just going to alter my sun a little bit. I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis a touch, maybe alter it on the y. And just give us a bit of a crescent so that way we have some light sort of shooting through these volumetrics a little bit more. Just makes it look a little bit neater in my opinion. And that looks pretty good. So the last thing I want to do is I want to click over into my world over here. And I want to add sort of like a procedural starry background. So if we grab a Voronoi texture. And switch this to smooth F1. Shift A, grab a color ramp. And plug this distance value into here and this color value into our background color and then drag this scale way up set it to something huge like 4000 and if you want to you can come over here to your scene settings and check render region so that way it'll only deal with stuff that's inside your camera frame then come back down to your color ramp slide up the black slider a little bit and slide the white slider all the way to the left now you can see we have a nice sort of densely packed star background. And I'm going to set these stars so that they're really, really tiny. That looks really good to me. But one last thing I do want to add is a bit of like nebulous gas, sort of like if you were looking at the Milky Way. So I'm going to again grab our friend the Musgrave texture. And this time I'm just going to set it to multifractal. Control T. Shift A and let's grab a mix RGB and plug that in here. I'll plug this into the factor and then I'm going to adjust my scale value here and switch this to 4D and Shift A, grab a math node. So we can divide this by a whole heck of a lot. And then if we adjust our detail and dimension values, as we have been. You'll see we're getting some nice sort of nebulous gas formations. And then I'm going to lower my scale to something really small, actually. I'll increase my divide to something a little bit larger, even like that. And then you can adjust this color value here. I'm going to set this to a very deep gray. 
and maybe even add in some saturation so that it fits sort of the color scheme of my planet. Now that I quite like. And so with that, we can just go ahead and click render image. And once you're done rendering, let's shrink this down and jump over back into our compositor. Check use nodes up here and slide your render layers node over. Shift right click to create this little junction here and then control shift click on that junction to bring up a viewer node. Now, if we shift A and bring in a glare node, I use this on basically every single render I make. I'm gonna set this from streaks to fog glow and then lower this threshold to something super low. I basically wanna isolate everywhere the sun is hitting versus everywhere it's not. So then we can adjust our mix value as we like and if you press Alt-V, you'll zoom in, press V, you'll zoom out, and if you hold Alt while using your center mouse button, you can drag the picture around. So I like that, and then I'm actually gonna add a second glare node, and I'm gonna up the threshold on this. So this will sort of isolate like the clouds and the really bright spots, and I'll set this mix a little bit lower, and I'm gonna come back to this first one and set the glare to high. Now, finally, we're gonna grab a very scary looking node called the color balance. Now, this is really big, but if we set it to offset power slope here, by adjusting this offset and raising up the value a touch, and then setting this color value to something bluish, it'll actually set our black values to something a tiny bit bluer and a tiny bit brighter and give our overall image this slightly bluish hue. And again, it's usually good to have some sort of color palette built for your scene, and then just adjust this color to whatever you have going on. Now, I'm also gonna adjust my power and just bring this up a little bit. And then I'll grab my slope and drag this up just a hair as well. And these values are just giving you slightly more control over like the contrast and how the light is brightening. And yeah, with that, if you jump back into your composite view, you can see we have an absolutely gorgeous planet render. Again, this is completely customizable. You can create basically infinite variations just using a single W noise slider. So this is really, really powerful. And yeah, that's the tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, consider liking, subscribing, all that jazz. And comment down below if you have any ideas for future stuff you want to see on the channel. I love getting inspiration from other people. So yeah, thank you for watching, and happy blending.